Did Elizabeth of York have a claim to the throne? Or did she maybe even have the greatest claim at the end of the Wars of the Roses? Questions like these are evergreens among people who are interested in the history of the Princess in the Tower, the Tudors or just the English monarchy. I thought I would answer it. No, none whatsoever. Thanks for watching, please like and wait, why are you still here? Cause you would like to have an explanation? Cause you read or heard otherwise? Since Elizabeth was the oldest child of King Edward IV and for example Mary as the oldest child of Henry VIII ended up on the throne? Fine. Let's talk about it in more detail then. There were and are two institutions that determined the line of succession, the current monarch and the parliament who had to consent by passing an act of succession. This is true to this day and the present is important for us. In 2015, the Perth Agreement became law. The male preference primogeniture was replaced with the absolute primogeniture. That meant only in 2015 it became law that the oldest child would inherit the throne no matter the gender. Before that it was customary that the oldest son would inherit the throne. Queens that could rule in their own right were an exception due to a lack of a male heir. If the parliament wanted a woman to accent to the throne it would name her directly in a law. For example the Act of Settlement of 1701 named Princess Anne of Denmark directly. As probably every person ever who is or was interested in the history of the time of Elizabeth of York knows, she had two brothers, Edward and Richard. And her father, Edward IV, made it clear that the older of her brothers should inherit the crown. In his will from the year 1475 we can read that he wished his son Edward the Prince to become king. Edward IV's accession to the crown had been affirmed by a special assembly in Westminster Hall in March 1461 and was later confirmed by his first parliament in the autumn of the year. It basically reconfirmed the part of the Act of Accord of 1460 that made Edward the heir to the crown as the oldest son of Richard of York. Edward IV didn't need to name his second son Richard in his will as the heir if his oldest son should die or couldn't be king to other reasons. This was common law at the time. It would have needed an act of parliament to change that. This is the reason why Edward IV indeed needed an act of parliament to erase his nephew Edward from the line of succession in 1478. This Edward was the son of his brother, George, Duke of Clarence, who liked fine wine and rebellions against Edward IV a little bit too much. If Edward IV died and his two sons would die as well, the crown would go to Edward's oldest living brother, a man named Richard, of whom you might have heard. This was because a male heir of Richard of York still existed. In this case, the crown would go to his male heirs, meaning Richard the third male heirs. And as we know, this is basically what happened. Richard the third ascended to the throne and his son was the heir to his crown. Edward the IV's children were declared bastards and cut out of the line of succession by an act of parliament, the Titulus Regius. Elizabeth of York had lost any claim she might have had for good when Richard's son died, the king reintroduced the son of his brother George to the line of succession and made him his heir. Every time a new law regarding the succession is passed, it erases all claims from persons that were on the former line of succession. There was only one way to change the line of succession without parliament consenting to it, the right of conquest. Whoever was able to take the crown by force had it. This was exactly the way how Henry VII became king. Nevertheless, his first parliament approved his ascension two months later. He famously had the law revoked that made Elizabeth of York a bastard and married her. But this didn't give her a claim to the throne. Arthur Tudor was the heir apparent as soon as he was born. Before that, it was still George's son Edward, which was one of the reasons why he was kept prisoner in the tower. 
Henry's marriage to Elizabeth was meant to stabilize his rule by integrating the former royal family into his own, but that didn't mean she had a claim to the throne. The clock for the line of succession was once more resetted. The second parliament approved Henry's kingship. So what would have been necessary to make Elizabeth of York queen in her own right? She would have needed an act of parliament, which was very unlikely since she still was a member of the not very popular Whitwell family, or she would have needed an army to conquer the crown. But to end this with a little bit of speculation, I think she was quite happy she didn't inherit the throne. I hope this is enough detail. And now once again, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. I hope you liked the video. Bye.